Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. Um, we are here to celebrate, to inaugurate, to connect with uh, Connected Educators Month. Um, and uh, yes, and there comes Chris Sloan. And we are going to be talking about youth voices. So we're kind of relaxing and uh, going um, and just talking about our work and uh, and see and see where that goes. Um, Chris Sloan, hi, welcome. You just got here just in time. Say hello if you're there yet. When you're ready, and why don't you do so? I think I'm here. There you go. Chris Sloan, who um, uh, was one of the initiators of uh, Youth Voices. I, I like to point back to like 2003 or so, so more than a decade ago. <laughs> um, and um, Christina Cantrell is with us as well. Christina has very kindly uh, taken many looks at Youth Voices in our work and um, supported us over the many years. Don Reed, whose students just got on today uh, from Michigan, is with us, and Karen Fassenpower, who has been emailing Don Reed about her students and, and <laughs> supporting us in the many ways that she does um, as well. Uh, say hello, everyone. Sherry Edwards is joining us as well. Um, Sherry is somebody we we uh, been connected in lots of ways. So uh, worth worth saying, um, teachers teaching teachers started. Um, eight or nine years ago um, with teachers who were using an earlier version of Youth Voices getting together and saying, um, you know what, uh, I'm going to have my kids do a map of their neighborhood. What are you going to do? Um, and, um, and it's evolved since then over the years. This is show number 413, I think. Um, and uh, so welcome, everybody. Why don't you, everyone, check in and say something about Youth Voices and being a connected educator yourself. Sherry, with you first, do you want to say hello and where you're coming from? Just quick introduction. Okay. All right. Hello. This is Sorry. Sherry Edwards, uh, middle school language arts teacher from Nespelum, Washington. And I've occasionally participated in Youth Voices. <laughs> So, <laughs> but I love the concept and I really love it that as a middle school teacher sometimes I can't quite squeeze that in. But that's where we're at. So cool. I just checked it out today and saw who's on there so we could get started. So <laughs> Great chair. Who's already Thank enrolled. You. Thank you. I mean we've invited people to come here tonight and, and uh, there may be people coming late. Um, I should send the invitation a couple more times I should say. But um, Anyway, um, and so we invited people who are very involved, like Chris and myself, and um, and and people who are just getting involved, and people like you who you know want to and have, are part of our community. I, I really think so. Karen, introductions, welcome. Can't hear you, Karen. Are you talking yet? No, oh. no, nope, we can't hear Karen. I can't at least. Okay, Don, go ahead, and Karen Hi. will figure it out. <laughs> I, I teach high school in Okemos, Michigan, and this is my second year with Youth Voices, and I love it, and I'm trying to incorporate more and more with Youth Voices and getting kids involved and, and having good conversations, and they're very, very excited about the fact that they know other people from different states are on the site, and so they're very, very interested in seeing what other people are writing and and joining the conversation. And you're you're doing a unit on um, I don't know I call it uh, mining personal stories. Is that close to what you're doing or? <laughs> Hi. Of Ibis years ago, and we do a writing boot camp, and so mm -hmm. it's really it's all personal writing that leads up to a personal narrative. And so, students are writing about their name right now, and I'm, they're excited to respond to Paul's students with my name, and they're going to publish those. And then my older students are also doing their name. They were looking at uh, in American literature, they were looking at their ancestry and etymology of names, so it fit mm -hmm. very well for us to also write about my name. So. That's how they're getting started. Cool. So, and, and one of the things we should, we will hopefully talk about is um, missions. 
Um, one of the uh, youthvoices.net slash my name uses the Sandra Cesaranos. I mean, it's not a brand new idea. But, um, and we've actually thrown that up in Genius and annotated it, so lots of ways to connect that we can talk about. But um, the idea of missions and the ancestry thing you just mentioned, I'm like, okay, so how could we kind of see what you're doing? And so sharing curriculum is what we're about to, is, is my point of bringing all of that up. And excited, I'm excited to say that I didn't create that mission. A brand new teacher at my school did. Um, so that, that's something that's neat. Um, Christina, welcome. Thanks. I was trying to tweet something about the creating curriculum, but um, yeah. I guess that's um, hi everyone. I'm Christina Cantrell, and um, because I work at the National Writing Project with um, a lot of folks here over the years, I've watched youth voices kind of grow and develop over time, and it's you know just sort of uh, what I love about youth voices is that sort of shared curriculum creation and what I see is teachers and students working alongside each other to develop this community and communities um, that seem to change and shift and develop over time sort of given different contexts and different needs at different times. Um, and we were just uh, talking to Joe Paraiso, um, who is a member um, her students blog at youthvoices.net and um, has been a is often here at Teachers Teach Teachers, Teachers talking about her curriculum and what she's working on connecting with others and she was just talking um, on a webinar just now both about sort of how and Elise said this really well like how the kids connect with each other in there but how the, the youth are also connecting really deeply with the work they're doing and the research and their passions and their interests and what they're working on and that the combination of those kind of connections are really rich within youth voices and pretty exciting to watch over time too. So. Yep. And she, I was going to say the same thing. Karen, you can say it. Go ahead. Can we hear what, you? Am I back? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, we're, you're back. So there was a shout out to Utah. Sure. There was a shout out to Utah that was really fun and I was kind of, I, I was having bandwidth issues so I was a little bit breaking up there but Joe was great and it was fun to hear her talk about the connections that her students have made with Chris's students and others. So Chris, welcome. Hi. Um, so, uh, you know, I like Youth Voices quite a bit actually um, and so I tend to throw my students into it. Uh, so they've um, commented on, um, for instance, like we looked at Joe's schools page and um, students just chose some students and um, my students chose some of those students and um, just made comments because we're I teach seniors uh, well one class that's on there is senior uh, AP English language and um, Joe's also teaching seniors and, and we do we both do long-range research papers and hers are just starting the process and mine aren't really even starting the process of the paper it's more like they're kind of planting some seeds I guess I mean it if I could say it seems like you you're considering kind of extending your research project uh, to kind of match her yeah. extensions is that mm -hmm. yeah so we're trying to pay a little bit more attention to what they're doing and um, I haven't really talked about doing a long-range project. So far, it's just like, hey, what are you interested in? Uh, let's write about it. And um, so that's kind of where we are. And then I have also a photography class that I have on there, too. So one of your students, um, I just put his piece, I think he's one of your students, um, is like he's interested in uh, legalization of marijuana, and he's interested in ISIS. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that's cool. Um, do you do you remember just offhand? Do you do, can you mention some other topics that um, I meant to send shoot you an email and say I was going to ask you to do this, but I didn't. Um, <laughs> like some of the other topics your kids are thinking about. I mean, because they're fascinating. Um, often. Wow. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, they're all over we the can place. Come back to that if you want. Yeah, uh, I mean, there's some um, topical ones, you know, like Ebola 
mm -hmm. is it coming our way kinds of things and um, the, you know the uh, Ray Rice kind of you know football um, and its problems with off field kinds of things but then there's also more enduring kinds of um, topics too like um, a lot of psychology topics it seems like they're really interested in um, um, stuff like that sorry I just had a oh, some some of the um, um, anorexia nervosa stuff is that your students yeah a lot of health that? kinds of things too um, so sorry to not be right on no it's okay that, that's that's good we can get to that so um, Worth saying, then, um, you know, you can, so my students aren't there yet. They're collecting questions. They're kind of figuring things out. I have middle school students, and, and they are doing the more personal narrative stuff um, here at the beginning, um, figuring we'll be doing that for a few more weeks and then kind of get to um, what I do think is the heart of Youth Voices, which is... Um, following personal passion, finding your question, um, and, and exploring that. And as a teacher, I want to say that it's not just saying to kids, this, you know, what is your passion, what is your question today? I mean, Chris, you're real casual about it, I, I and mean, you have your style. I'm, I'm, like, I'm like always working like, okay, Lucille, uh, you know, is this, um, she wants to know about her country, right? And so, okay, what's the question in that she's from Haiti? Um, and so it doesn't... So there is a process of some sort that we all do kind of individually, but we're working to get kids to find issues and questions that they want to stay with for a long time. Is that... Do you have a take on that, Chris? Or anybody yeah, I think it, it too? I mean, I have a lot of reasons um, that I actually... I mean, it's a list of probably... 12 things that I, or more, wow, I'm just looking at it right now, um, my rationale, like why I do Youth Voices, um, because I think, you know, like, the best question that a student will ask me is, like, why are we doing this, and so um, I, uh, you know, I have lots of reasons, and one of them is that, um, the inquiry thing, because, you know, it's an AP English language class, so some of it is kind of like, you know, you have to know how to do analysis and um, there's some stuff that you know like you should probably know to, to you know pass the test or do well on it but then that doesn't really drive a lot of what they do because they'll glaze over pretty quickly if if that's all I do and so um, it's really important to get them passionate about their question well they're already passionate it's get that getting them to write about the things that they're passionate about that they care about and um, Right now, you know, um, they're like I said, they're kind of planting seeds, and it it, it gains momentum the longer you do it. So um, as they start to build a body of work, or if they build their portfolio out in um, youth voices, it um, you know that there's some recurring themes that will um, they'll start to notice. So part of what I'm doing right now is like it's inquiry based, and then it's looking for um, you know which snowflake is going to roll down the hill and be a snowball by the end of um, you know the process and then we'll be ready to, to do a deep dive into a research paper that usually doesn't happen until the spring so right now they're just I tell them like today um, they I just said update one of your earlier posts do a, a time filter on your search and just look for something that was written within the last hour is where we start and then I'll say, now, how about within the last 24 hours? And then at the latest, I said you can go as far as a week, but it's got to be something that's new, either like the book they're reading. They're reading a, from a classics list, so they're reading the news to see if there's something posted about their book within the last 24 hours um, or about one of their inquiry questions. So that was kind of interesting because, you know, they think these books are – classic and dead, but like they keep popping up in news stories even, so mm -hmm. that was some of the stuff we're doing. Cool. Um, Don, do you want to jump in and how, how are, are you approaching it this year and how have you approached inquiry and stuff and, and how is being on Youth Voices maybe shifting there? 
sure. or complementing it or whatever. <laughs> right. Sure. Well, for me, I'm starting off with personal writing with the hopes of students moving towards uncovering some things that they're interested in. So as we move out of personal writing, there's also questioning that goes along with that. So we were, we we gently explore the self and world questions. And then I'm also trying to build some relevance to today. And I'm excited about having my students look at what Joe and Chris's students are doing in terms of inquiry because they can start to see some of the conversations that are going on and how people are researching. I stole an idea from Chris a few weeks ago where he said, told his students to go on a date with their topic and read widely and they loved it. They were all over that. They thought that was a great analogy. <laughs> and so <clears throat> they had to read just different, different things to see if they're interested in a certain topic. And so I'm excited about what Chris is saying in terms of moving inquiry into being readers and writers in the world and exploring what's relevant and what's going on around you in order to dig deeper into what you're interested in and try to figure out what's what's going on, what are the conversations. And then last year I started doing inquiry and research with students and they were sharing some of their process along the way Was they were reading um, literature circle books and then they were asking questions along the way and that led them to the traditional research and then also doing some more multimedia work. So. I l I'm excited about the mix of of personal narratory and the creation of various texts and multimedia texts. And I'm also excited about the genius. This week I was going out to students and we were excited about having some shared reading and annotation together. Cool. So Grace Raphael is with us. Welcome, Grace. Oh, hi, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm joining you guys late, but it's been a long night. But and, uh, good to hear from you all. Cool. Grace has been in, is with us uh, in the New York City Writing Project, and uh, last summer we worked together um, on Youth Voices, and um, you uh, did a lot of work with uh, CL MOOC this summer, right? So you're a connected educator. Is that yeah. fair enough to say? <laughs> yeah, I'm a connected uh, creator, and I think the CL MOOC had me experience it as a creator, and doing it for myself was a wonderful experience that said, wow, how can this be transferred to what kids get to do, and see themselves as creators, and see themselves as having the agency in what they do and then transfer that to what they see in what they read, what they research, and what others do. But starting from the self is so amazing. It's, it was a personal um, enlightenment for me and release for me for the summer, but it also reminded me that regardless of what our restrictions are during the year, we need to remember that the students are the agents. Yeah, and you know, as as somebody in a small school that uh, I'm speaking of myself now, um, and and helping to coordinate some of the development of curriculum with uh, you know very young teachers, that that uh, that notion of starting with self is not obvious. Um, no. <laughs> so, it's something that that has to be talked about and given rationale for. Um, so and developed over time. So yeah. And I think people are feeling that they are being restricted in that. I mean, the various um, standards and restrictions, uh, not restrictions, but standards and, and ways of looking at learning that are being put upon teachers make them yeah. think that it's supposed to come from outside. But I think teachers need to remember that it still comes from inside that matters. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know how to do that when teachers are up against things that make them feel like they have to do things in a certain way. I don't know. It's, it's hard for a teacher. It's hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say that um, I've credited Paul for this before, but the sort of 
Um, I feel like a philosophy we gained from youthvoices.net via Paul um, that helped inform the connected learning work um, was really this idea of, you know, leading with interest and leading where teachers are, you know, like it's the summer and teachers are interested in a whole lot of different things, right? As well as teaching. So like how do we bring that those interests together and really um, I think it speaks to that idea of like the, you know, the whole, more of the whole person together as an educator and 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 how and then see and I think what we see is some powerful ways that that translates into student thinking about students holistically that way too and through their interests. Um, so I think it's you know I think we've learned a lot from youth voices in that also. I, Karen, I, I sorry, uh, I'll I'll make a note of this later. But uh, and so if anybody thinks this this is following a logical line, um, I'll just break it up here for a second. But just just to say one of one of Don's questions um, a couple of weeks ago was uh, when Chris was referring to finding. Joe's students, um, I, I was just beginning to be worried about, if you go to youthvoices.net slash schools, you see a whole list of schools, and some of those schools don't exist anymore, and some of them aren't active, and then within them, some of them, so Don was asking, how do I know, weren't you, um, yes. who's active, who's not active? And it's a wonderful thing. I think Tommy Bateau is uh, over there in the chat room. It's wonderful that, you know, he drops in sometimes and drops out sometimes. And, you know, maybe Sherry's going to drop back with us. <laughs> Valerie was trying to get in here. Anyway, so it's great when people drop in and out. But um, trying helping us think about that a little bit would be useful, Karen. Is that Okay. Yeah, maybe right? there's a way we could sort of message out to people and sort of say who's active and who's looking for, like, a collaboration it's a good time, it's the beginning of the school year, and then maybe we could um, somehow asterisk or something, the ones on the school page, and sort of do a little yeah. informal. So that's what Karen, does. Karen helps us think about that, <laughs> and then actually do it, so it's great for you to do. And, and just today there were a bunch of um, six-word memoirs or something, six-word sort of broadsides or something, whatever you call them. From from um, Oakland, but it, what, that wasn't Joe's school. So there are other schools from the Oakland school district who are jumping in there too. So yeah, Val, are you there? She's coming. She's trying. Okay. <laughs> so um, sorry about that interruption, but uh, you know that's what we do. The uh, <laughs> next thoughts here. Where are we? Um, Chris, could I could I point to you? I, did you get a chance to that go on a date idea, right? So <laughs> yeah. I feel like did you get did you get that written up as a mission yet? Um, and is is one question. Um, and the point of that is like I want to do that too, and I I could just do it, but um, so how can we so so make it making it a more general question? Um, yeah. How can we continue to share curriculum more? Like there are probably, I haven't even counted them, like 150. Some of them are just ideas. Some of them are really developed. I'm really pushing them in my school as, as a way for us to share um, curriculum together. But Yeah, so um, I didn't actually use those words. Uh, <laughs> yes, you did. We have it on tape. <laughs> no, I mean... <laughs> I didn't use it in the mission. I thought, you know. Oh, you did create a mission. Okay, yeah. I did, yeah. But that, I mean, that's part of the deal. Is like I went to the missions page and I actually yeah. used my command F to find it because like <laughs> it's it's down there pretty deep. Okay. Uh, but it's uh, what's now it called? I feel kind of chagrined about you no, know. No, no, it's there. It's called getting started with youth voices. You know, I oh, mean, that's okay. it's it's the same principle. The idea was the dating thing sounds so much more fun. <laughs> yeah, my, yeah. Uh, so um, I did uh, make that, Paul, and so yeah, good. Um, yeah, so it's my fault. I didn't find it. Yeah. So. Well, you know, isn't that like <laughs> life? You know, it's probably another metaphor. Um, you know, there's there's a lot going on, and um, so my thing was with this was just like, can you do it out of the shoot? How can you get up and running? 
with youth voices in like one class. And I technically I said it was a 90 minute block class. So that was kind of my thing. So I was like speed dating, I guess. But uh, I didn't really want to, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't know, how, I didn't want to go. I didn't use the metaphor in the uh, mission, and that's maybe why you didn't see that. So, um, but that was what I, my goal was like. Okay, what if I'm new to the site? So Don, by the way, we all can um, edit all of the administrators on here his thing, so we can go put the metaphor back if he's too shy. To <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> so, but anyway, that was the the intent. And and we're saying we're saying and is that uh, there is a URL you can change the URL so you could make it youthvoices.net slash speed dating, um, and uh, then we could all find it. <laughs> a lot of people find it. And then send an email to us. And yeah, yeah. So anyway, I'll I'll try to make that happen. And and. And I'm I'm also thinking that uh, yeah we meet here every once in a while and that's great, but um, it, you know I've been I've noticed that I've been sending an almost a newsletter like here's here's what's new on Youth Voices that would be a weekly kind of thing that would be cool to do to mm -hmm. to help us all stay connected. But anyway, so other ideas, Sherry, what have you been thinking over there? <laughs> And Sherry, you know what? I'm really curious. I mean, you say you want to get on, and then you, what you said right at the beginning is that in middle school it's tough. And I know you've talked also about pressures in your own school and stuff. Is there? Yeah. Can you Grace talk is, a little bit Grace about really that? Address, Grace really addressed that. Is that we have, you know, our our school is under a lot of pressure to raise the test scores, and so there's a lot of things that we absolutely are required to do, and so turning that into um, a vast virus database, turning it into um, youth voices, that's just you know getting to that as part of the issue. But you know, I mm -hmm. I think I'm finding the ways to do that, and um, because blog, it's just like blogging, and there's a reason why we blog, and so and those fit with our Common Core state standards, so. And also, I want the students to be looking at what they're interested in. And that's mm -hmm. part of what everything that Chris was saying. So one of the things that I started this year was to make sure the students are asking the questions about whatever it is we're studying. Mm -hmm. And so they're making a list of questions, and they're analyzing them as open or closed. And then they're choosing the ones they think will answer our focus question. And then they're choosing, I'm having them choose, well, what audience are you going to provide this information to and in what form so that they're choosing, you know, how they're going to share their information instead of me saying, this is the project and what it's going to look like. So I'm trying to turn things around while they're still meeting our language arts standards. So we're going to do NaNoWriMo. So I, somebody in the other chat said, they were doing something with that, so I'm really interested in that. And then for two days, I thought I was going to be teaching social studies also. So I joined Out of Eden, <laughs> and I that walk out of Eden, and I noticed that's on Youth Voices. So mm -hmm. I've got a couple of, couple of twists in there that I'm going to try to work on. So... We get, thank you for all of that. I'm, we could certainly go to um, like allies and connections we make because, yeah, um, my uh, my students are going to be jumping on the uh, out of Eden Learn work as well. Um, I just put up a mission that's youthvoices.net slash footstep one, for example, where I'm just sort of adopting adopting um, some of the work that Project Zero has put out already. Um, you know, and and one of the things that I'm doing is using now comment. So the dispatches, Paul Salopak's dispatches, we throw them in there and try to get kids to to annotate um, socially together. So so those are some of the ideas that we've been messing with as well. And Chris, um, I think your some of your kids are going to be there too, right? And I don't know if we're in the same walking group yet. I don't know if the uh, I'm already in one, and I didn't see you, but I don't know if they add people or not. Yeah. Uh, 
But um, so I'm okay. kind of curious. We can we can throw it. stones at your group or something. Right. right. <laughs> uh, um, I was curious about this talk mm -hmm. of social annotation because, like, I've um, I mean, I heard Don mention it, and then Paul, you've mentioned uh, now comment and genius. And mm -hmm. so, like, let's say I wanted to get my some of my students doing some of this common annotation with your students. Um, I mean, part of it is picking a text if it's genius, right? And then now comment is I'm just not up on either one of them because uh, I missed the genius show. And then now comment um, is it like discuss? Uh. I'm not sure what discuss is. So no, my 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 quick um, and and both both the the genius people and and uh, Dan uh, Dorenberg at uh, at now comment um, like sent me emails and said said I was wrong on this. So I'll say that first of all. But <laughs> the way I have socially constructed these two sites, okay, is that um, I'm using um, genius as a place to um, annotate literature and to kind of make um, statements about um, literature, um, that's the kind of annotation it is. So it's more like a, a wiki. Um, so right, it, if you can follow that a little bit, although it could be used in lots of different ways, but that's how I'm pushing it. And now comment is more of a place of discussion. Um, one of the, in both cases, you can you can add your own text, or you can you know find a text there. So there's no limitation on that. Is there any question mm -hmm. yet? And and um, I, I have invited Dan, and um, I'm about to invite the genius folks back for two weeks from now. And Dan's coming next week with some other teachers who are using now comments, so we can keep talking about this. Um, ha having said all that, Chris, one of the things that I hear you also saying, though, is that we don't want to lose the, the magic of kids just responding to each other on Youth Voices. Okay. I get that. Um, but I also think that if we can do it around common text, that would be really exciting. So pushback, feedback, thoughts, confusion oh, already? I'm, or, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about what how teachers interpret annotation and how they um, possibly limit it and don't see it as an expression of student response to whatever they're reading. So I think our concept of annotation, as broad as it can be, will make that a richer experience and is, isn't limited by the technology, but is enriched by the and, and so saying to kids that annotation is not you're publishing something that is a paraphrase or a summary because I've heard teachers do this. And no, no, no. I, you know, an annotation is a is also a reader response. What is your talk back to the text? You know, what is your opinion about what is being said here? And I think that is what makes annotation rich. That should not be limited to the teacher by the fact that it's a technology, you know, environment. I don't know what I, really what I'm saying, but I'm trying to say that it should stay as open-ended as we believe annotation is, even though the technology, you know, you know, is a targeted place to put it. It is still not a limited way of responding. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's clear. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I mean, I, again, I, what, and this may be confusing, but yes, and I'm also fascinated by how genius is a place where you're writing third person, right? You're writing, mm -hmm. right? So it's, so, so it, and it's a really fun place to, uh, so far uh, where kids have done kind of read a response like, this is what I think, and then just oh. it's a pretty simple thing to say, well, how could you make that a more generalized statement? Yes, I yeah. um, so, so it's a place to kind of learn all of that. But Chris, um, a very practical, uh, again, youthvoices.net slash, um, what's step one? Um, 
takes you to, there are two links on there, to um, two of Paul Solopic's, um the two that Project Zero has chosen. Um, and you can kind of begin to see the annotations. It's real easy for kids to jump in if, they're, if they already have a, a Google um, address, right? They can just join the site really quickly that way um, and, and annotate there. So, but then the other thing, though, is as your kids are um, collecting stuff that they're finding, you mentioned you called them snowflakes earlier, right? Mm-hmm. Um, like if it's just a snowflake, maybe they don't want to do this, but once it becomes more of a snowball, <laughs> so, uh, more of a significant text, um, they could they could put it up on now comment and then announce on their blog on their post their discussion post on youth voices let's talk about this together right and then make a link to it there and or I have done that you know I just added that to some of your students stuff right <laughs> so, um, yeah. so just to prime the pump a little bit it's youthvoices.net slash footstep numeral one yeah okay right? so I that's just, just the latest example but yeah well, I go there and then um, I see an interface for um, the now comment. I think there's there's toward the middle. There's a link to two to two of the things. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, I see. I get it. So then the Soul Brothers. Yep. If I click on that, sorry, but I just had to kind of see this. Got it. So the Soul Brothers goes to right. Got it. That's kind of cool. Yeah. I mean, I could have... Uh, yeah, so my students um, would... Uh, they need to obviously sign up for Now Comment, and then they can just... Yeah, but like I said, it's real easy. There's a, uh, there's a button f- if, you're, uh, if you're logged into Google. Um, you just hit the button, and it pulls them right in. So that's nice. nice. Um, Something I told Dan he had to get. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> my... Photographers actually have been, you know, because obviously uh, Salopex Walk Around the World is pretty visual. Um, mm-hmm. The National Geographic piece of it, you know, there's some pretty stunning photos. And, you know, I teach, I use this with my photography class. So this seems like a pretty promising thing. So I'm in there. I think I'll have my students play around with that either cool. tomorrow or Friday because they were already doing kind of some out of Eden work. Hmm, we'll give it a go. And I know I'm going to break this when I say this, but it's okay. I'm glad you're there. Here's Guru, right? I want to mention Guru because you, if you go, just sorry, you're sorry. But, but like the, the reason, I, so Joe's students last year collected the research they did into these collections, and we put them up as a library on Guru, right? And Karen helped us do that and so forth. Um, so. Her students' work from their their research from last year is there. So if there's a and I don't know how you get there because um, somebody help me. With that. I think it's youth. I think it's guru dot org um, pound sign youth voices slash pound sign youth voices. Did that work? Um, it's pretty simple. If you just go to guru and look under the libraries, you'll find you, the youth voices library. So a lot of stuff that I've done in collaboration with with other people. Um, has worked. Oh yeah, yeah, Christine, I see that. But so, should we? Should I stop and look for that or not? Here's my point. No, my point is so another thing that I think we could be doing as we do research. Another way to connect is that kids could collect work, multimedia work. Um, they could like create. At first, it would be just uh, folders that they're creating. Um, and then what's what's nice about Guru is that they can then share that folder, and other people can add to the folder as well. So I could be looking at uh, police violence and collecting articles from Oakland, and then kids in the Bronx could find some articles that they could add also. Um, <sighs> lots of tools. The point of it is that uh, getting kids together, and um, we don't want to get lost in the tools. So, thank you for listening that long. But let's get back to the point of all this. And can somebody help me? <laughs> K- 
Karen, can you help me? <laughs> like, are there too many tools here or what? I mean, there are. People aren't yes. using them. But, yeah, go ahead. What? Well, what are you thinking? I mean, I do think, like, it sounds like a lot of tools, and I kind of love all this stuff, but listening to all this, I'm like, ah, I don't even know how to approach it. But I think it's also good to have a selection and sort of let people gravitate toward what works for them. And I mean, I think as much as it makes sense to have stuff be on Youth Voices, like we've talked about this idea of doing some kind of roughly synchronous groups like a MOOC or like a little, like a, I forget what we were even calling, bundled together missions where students from different schools might go through a couple weeks of curriculum together or something. Mm -hmm. And you know you could do that in a in a course system, or you could just do it in Youth Voices, and it might not be quite as perfect. But I think it's less confusing and less kind of overhead to have stuff as much as possible be in Youth Voices. But if you want to do something like annotation that's really a separate function, then I think you know people just pick the tools that work for them and don't feel like you have to know or do everything because they also change. I mean the other thing I, I think about a lot now with some of this stuff especially that's free is like how long is it going to be around and what's the investment to learn it because it seems like a lot of stuff continues to come and go and so I mean I just think you bite off what you think you can manage depending on how well it fits what you're doing. I also wanted to talk just real quickly about how it's about the teacher as well as the student because I think what I saw two summers ago and I know it happened this summer as well though I wasn't as directly involved is seeing the teacher as learner is as important as seeing as the student as learner and the, as much as the teachers can be involved in doing hey what we're doing right now is as important as the students doing it and the more that we do it ourselves, both embeds it in our belief in it, but also helps us, I think, to really feel how important it is for the students to do it and, and to sort of see the different inroads for students, because there are different inroads for us. Uh, so I think the teacher as participant is as important as the student as participant. That's, I think that's that's a really good comment. I think yeah. that's what Youth Voices has expanded over the last couple of years is there's a lot of space for teachers in it as well. So I would encourage anyone who's saying, "What are you guys talking about?" to go there and look at it and and see where's the space both for yourself and your students. I I think we're all in this together. So let's go at it together. I like that. So taking that just to a really micro level, that um, not to trivialize, but I, I've been thinking lately about the supports, the support documents and things for Youth Voices. Like we have that group on P2PU that has mm -hmm. some support, and I'm I've been thinking about sort of how to update that or how to make it more accessible or more useful to people. Um, I wonder if putting that in an annotation tool or something would make any sense or just if anybody has other thoughts about how what kind of support resources would be helpful or what format would be useful to people uh, um, sorry gives me an excuse to say if you, youthvoices.net slash missions um, I did take that text and put it in genius and oh, cool. it, it then um, you know has lots of uh, annotations um, attached to it. So nice. is that is that a kind of thing you're talking about? Yeah. I mean, what's I cool about that. Genius is that cool. you can you can embed anything from Genius into um, other websites, so you can pull it right into uh, Youth Voices, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so what kinds of things are you annotating on the mission page then? <laughs> no, like just make a mission. Right? Yeah, just what is a mission? Oh, okay, so it's like a user document. Yeah, or... and it yeah. relies heavily on Gary Stay. Oh, I see that. Me. <laughs> I just quote him all over the place. The <laughs> yeah, but, um, yeah, so there's that. But, but we're saying that when you create a document or you find a document, and if you're a teacher and you can become a teacher pretty quickly by just asking them, and telling them you want to be a teacher and an editor on Genius. I know this is yet another one. I'm sorry, but um, if you if you add 
the um, uh, the sorry, the tag Youth Voices, it then goes to our Youth Voices page. So there is a Youth Voices page in Genius, right? Um, and so, and all of these are linked, believe it or not, um, on the on the um, member page. So um, there is a link to the Youth Voices page there. Um, and if it's, we had, yeah, sorry, if we had a Genius account, could we add annotations to the same document in the embedded version, or do we have to go to Genius? You go to Genius to do the in, okay. the yeah, but then I like it this. shows this up is, on there. Yeah. yeah, this is exactly yeah. kind of what I was thinking. Cool. And you can yeah, you can put your own text up there and or other text too. Yeah, so anyway, right, so. Um, we got off on tools, and that, I guess that's okay. But um, Don, what are you thinking? <laughs> um, I, well, in terms of the tools, I'm okay with all the like. In terms of that, I'm fine. I'm thinking about it's cool to have all those different things. I think that um, some of that started. I sometimes block out certain things and then try to zero in on what I need. And so um, I'm constantly trying to figure out like which things I want. So I like the I like the collaboration and the curriculum and all that. But I also heard what Karen was saying. She was talking about like what is the user support because I had a couple hiccups this week. So I was thinking about that too. Like um, I I feel like sometimes I don't know exactly where I need to go in terms of that. So I just figure I'll, I'll email whoever will help me and then hope that I have an answer and then I'll just figure it out. And then and that's how I, how I approach it in the classroom too. I'll say, hey, we're learning this together. We're figuring it out. So, um, But in the same sense, I think Youth Voices does that nicely. The reason I, I, you know, I was using blogs for a number of years and I like this better because the conversation is there and, and because the curriculum is there and kids are excited about about seeing that other people are doing some of the same things and having those same conversations. So I, I like that all the tools are there and then I'll pick and choose along the way. So. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thanks for all that. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I, I would just add that we want to also be um, getting teachers on who aren't as game as you are. <laughs> you know, so that's, that's worth thinking about. And I, yeah, and yeah. I wonder if yeah. it's overwhelming when you hear about all these things going on, how overwhelming that is. I know that I work with, in some circles, I work with people where they would just want, here's the basics step by step, and, and that can turn some people away. So it's, it's a both and. How do you um, get all of us excited and going forward and exploring all these different things? And then how also is it streamlined a little bit for people that are just getting started or students that are just getting started and exploring that. I think that's a little bit of what I was talking about in terms of the teacher agency in it. Like, go with what is okay with you as a teacher. You know, and, and it may seem overwhelming that there's, you know, 15 things you could do, but if you feel comfortable with two, do the two. You know, it's like we were talking about earlier, it's not about the tools, it's about giving the kids that, that open space. And whatever works for you and your context, I'm hoping we can find a way of communicating that. I'm not sure how. But. Youth Voices itself, I guess it doesn't, it's kind of a centering point potentially um, so how to support that I mean just because it's NTTT here too is potentially a centering point so I, I wonder um, you know what designs really support those like centering points and then exploration but always having those points so people know they can sort of count on or come back to that helps a little bit mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, one of the things that really, um, I think, through the years has, you know, the reason that I find it so powerful is that I can't possibly read and respond to my students' work if they're, if they're writing as much as they should. And so um, the, I just cons constantly see the motivating 
uh, influence of comments when students receive uh, comments from their peers on their writing, especially from ones that they don't know. And I think that's kind of what distinguishes it from a classroom blog, you know. Like, I could say to people, okay, everybody comment on each other's stuff. And, you know, sometimes those are interesting comments and, you know, sometimes even powerful, but a lot of times they're perfunctory. And so when it's, um, like, when I say, okay, we're going to go check out this school in Oakland today because Joe asked for some feedback um, a couple weeks ago. And so, like, if, if my name is Larry, I'm going to start with anyone with the first name L on that page. So, you know, like, I spread the students around. And then um, what happens is they there's something about uh, commenting on... Chris, you're great with dating, i got to say. But go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, you know, like, there's... Um, if uh, you're distracting me, with all this <laughs> uh, but uh, no, no, no. like um, when they actually look at the work of these students in these different communities, like that's interesting for them. That's interesting reading. It's pretty high interest, and they talk about it. I hear them talk about you know the other people's work, and then when they get feedback from uh, strangers, especially like I hear a lot about you know. First of all, there's the quantity thing. Like someone will say, like, "Oh, wow, I got 12 comments," um, you know. And then someone, it's like a, you know, it's a one-upsmanship. Then it's like, "Oh, I have 20," or you know, whatever number that might be. Like I have two, I have four. But then, um, you know, always there's then the next step is whether I do it or not with them. There's this critical examination of the comments, and then like there's some really powerful moments that happen when. Um, they they get this unsolicited feedback, and I think that's what really drives it, and I think that's what stalls it, is when my students will post, and then they don't get anything. You know, that there's this other side of the coin where someone says, like, wow, I got eight comments, and then, you know, I hear the kids say, like, I didn't get any, you know, so it's like this judgment about maybe I'm not writing well enough, or maybe my topic's not interesting, uh, you know, and... Um, that, but I do see like the power of those connections that people make, and so all this stuff we're talking about, whether it's uh, now comment or um, like uh, you know the, the different various social annotations we have, I think it's all about connections. And when we bring those kids' interests together, it's um, you know that's where the power is. And so that's why the other day I just sent out an email: Hey, if anyone has any students you want my students to comment on, let me know, and we'll just full force, just mobilize. Right. So, and, and one of the things we had talked about for years, and I'll give a quick example. I have a student who's um, been writing, he hasn't posted yet, but I've been writing about prostitution. And I think there's a kid in, uh, one of Joe's kids is also, and I think one of your kids recently posted right. something about human, human trafficking, trafficking in Portland. And, yeah. So, like, it's in my head to get those three kids together, right? But how do we do that? <laughs> I, well, mean, I have a I, question. Yeah. Is yeah. there a way for teachers on Youth Voices to talk to each other other than like here or if you know emails or like is there any kind of do, do I know the answer to this already I'm sorry I'd... no but we could create a channel for that I guess that we don't no I'm like a G plus community but that might not be the right thing yeah yeah I thing. mean <laughs> I mean even just thinking about like emailing all the teachers and saying who's looking for collaboration I wonder if that, that might be worth thinking about. Does that resonate with other people? Yeah, and we're not, well, sorry. It does, it does for me because I think for some teachers, the buy-in of the teacher community is a strong uh, bond that doesn't have anything to do with whether Youth Voice is something that they want or understand. They do and they will. But having the teacher community, I think, is something that would help. Yeah, and, and it would be possible to create a, so we have to look into this, but I, I'm, I know it is, to create a channel where teachers are posting and you would only see, you wouldn't see it on the, the front page. 
because I, I, I want to kind of preserve it as a youth space. Right, right. But, but yeah, so we could, we could absolutely figure that out. So then we could post, like, you know, this kid should get with this kid. But there ought to be a way to... I mean, there is there are there is tagging, and we can find each other that way. But you know, being able to follow each other is an mm. obvious thing we need. But well, and like the conversations the meantime, we have yeah, here yeah. are so rich, yeah. and I just wonder about all the other. Like, I know there are people out there who are doing voices who aren't in these conversations, and it would be nice to like be able to connect with them. Right. I like that idea of having a teacher part of it, because you could. Emails are one thing, but to be able to actually go to a spot and post a question or say, I'm doing this project, do you want to join me? I think that's important. Important. All right, Karen, <laughs> let's make that happen. There's, okay. there's one good thing. And then I would like to say one other thing, if I can get my voice out, <laughs> it's back to something that um, Chris said about what can I do to get people to do it in just one class period. But I'd like one thing that really got my kids interested two years ago was when I showed Paul's class from 2005 when you were getting them to write their 10 essential question, you know, their self and world questions. Mm -hmm. And that really keyed into my students. They were just glued to the screen seeing kids like them answering those questions and you having a conversation. Oh, there are other classes where their teacher is asking them questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just not my teacher. So that, that, that's a video. Thinking, that was a video well, they saw. That's a video you yeah. had on. Um, I think yeah, it's it's still at the bottom of youthvoices.net slash questions. Yeah. yeah and then, then yeah. and then before I start the their questions, I'd have them looking at the posts that have already been there. And then they start seeing people that are writing about things that they're interested in that they hadn't, didn't think they could write about mm -hmm. so beyond sports. So mm. I think that's something else for someone who's considering um, joining Youth Voices. That's a couple of things that, that are helpful. You know, Chris mentioned earlier psychology, and his kids are like all the psych. It's so surprising to me that that isn't in schools more. <laughs> but I mean, Chris, you also have a couple kids writing about religion this year too, which is yeah, pretty yeah. fascinating stuff. Yeah. So like, you know, that's forbidden, I guess, in schools. But I guess not at a Catholic school. But. <laughs> But, right. certainly, but certainly, yes. Um, I, I, those are just two points. But yeah, that that is what gets exciting about youth voices is that you see things there that you're not you're not you know it's not supposed to be in school, <laughs> but it is. That's, that's part of what's exciting about it. Um, we're up the. Sort of final thoughts here. I mean, I think we, I think we got to some really interesting things, themes about um, connected educators here. But uh, to, could somebody help, or as we go around, underline that for us? <laughs> Chris, do you want to start off, Chris Sloan? <laughs> sure. Um, well, I guess I would pick up where I left off. I, I mean, I did talk about that. Uh, you know, where it gets exciting is where they connect, and. Um, that never gets old. Uh, and so really what Connected Educators is all about, I mean, that's what's made my teaching so much fun. Like every day is a lot of fun and the days just go by fast because there are so many ways that when the kids connect in uh, ways that, over things that they care about, um, you know, it's just, it's just a joy. And so that's my thing with Connected Education. That's why I always try to connect them as much as possible because um, I think, you know, I have a lot of anecdotal evidence that, um, you know, that that's a good thing for them. Um, but I think Connected Educator stuff really just from a kind of a self-serving point of view, it's like it makes teaching a lot of fun. I'll say that. Cool. Christina. I'm going to call on people here <laughs> so we can get through it. Well, I just, um, you know, I was just thinking back what, what Grace said about how personal all of this is as well as professional. And 
um, thinking also about how interests are also personal and professional professional and it's you know really important to dig into all aspects of that and how having a larger community really um, continues to push your thinking so this community itself continues to push my thinking um, and so um, you know, I think that's part of what's so important about being a connected educator. You can keep growing, too. Don, thank you for joining us again. Your thoughts? I'm excited about so many things, but the relevancy for kids as they make connections is really important. And in learning how to enter conversations, in order to figure out like that they need to read but they also need to understand what people are talking about and how to mm. enter those conversations is huge and and also all those things lead into inquiry for them and exploration with the personal and professional like Christina was talking about and the tr ultimately the transfer of learning because when they can have those conversations here they can move into other public spaces such as what we're doing so I'm all yeah. those things. I mean, it all ties together for for me. And I've been seeing the chat in the background about your interest in uh, doing some Youth Voices Live stuff like this with kids. And yes, we want to get there. So yeah, yeah. Well, let's talk about that later in the month. <laughs> so, yeah. Great. Yeah, not right now. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, um, yes to everything everyone has said. I think the connectedness is the key whether we're connecting with each other as educators or we're finding a way for our students to connect with each other, I think that's what's important. And I, I also think we need to sort of put up a shield against those things that say that's not important and make sure that we include that in whatever the things that are being placed upon us are that there still is connectiveness in any of the standards or any of the things that are being put upon us. There's still the reader in the reading. There's still the writer in the writing. And if we remember that, I think we'll continue no matter what the environment is, but it'll always be about our learners. Karen and Cher. Um, Go ahead, Karen. Sorry. That's okay. I'm thinking a lot about agency today, and somebody during one of the the earlier at Innovator webinars, somebody said to me on Twitter, um, "Students can't have agency if teachers don't have agency." And and I think, you know, I, I first of all, I just appreciate everybody for making making agency for yourself and for your students in light of some really hard classroom environments right now and I think we do make our own agency and that's what this is that's what this is all about and also I'm really excited about um, having some kind of teacher collaboration space on youth voices so look for action on that in the next couple weeks Sherry thanks for joining us yes and I'm just I just agree with uh, what everybody said it's connections and it helps to open the box that students are sometimes, that we all are sometimes in, we just think things are a certain way and then we, our eyes are opened when we connect with people in other parts of the world. So connections are important. Cool, thank you. And, and my final thought, I just want to say that um, a couple days ago, uh, Monday, I um, borrowed a, a journal prompt from um, <laughs> From Monica Hardy, um, which was, uh, if you could do anything you wanted to all day, what would you do? Mm -hmm. um, you know, didn't have any restrictions on you. And I ended up writing about all the things I wanted to uh, make happen on Youth Voices, which I think is really crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but just to say. <laughs> uh, anyway, so um, thank you all for uh, talking about it here tonight with us um, and uh, helping us uh, help others kick off Connected Educators this month. Um, we uh, have been doing this for several years um, under the with the World Bridges Network um, at edtechtop.com where uh, Dave Cormier and Jeff Lebo still hang out once in a while. Um, thank you all for um, coming by tonight. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Good night. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Nice to see you. See you.